Um, today I want to speak uh, uh, on a very uh, good uh, topic which is really dear to my heart uh, from Luke chapter 7. Okay. Mm, and uh, the title of the message is Loving Jesus, Loving Jesus More. Okay. Loving Jesus More. And uh, Luke chapter 7 has got two incidents where Jesus uh, was there. One is about the incident of a uh, centurion that is in the beginning of the chapter. And towards the end of the chapter, we have where Jesus was with, uh, where a sinful woman came, uh, you know, and washed Jesus' feet. So today I want to speak on that. It is from, uh, if you have your Bibles open, Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to the end of it. It's a wonderful portion where we we learn some great spiritual truth and which will change our life okay absolutely change our life and this is so dear to my heart because i can identify with this passage uh, we all can identify actually okay so verse uh, we'll slowly read through this passage and uh, and uh, see what god speaks to us okay uh, verse 36 onwards now one of the pharisees was requesting him to dine with him and he entered the pharisee's house and reclined at the table so there was a pharisee his name was simon and he was requesting uh, jesus so there were many people who were requesting jesus to come uh, to their house and one of them, them was this pharisee simon he requested him to dine and jesus uh, used to go to any of these places, you know, whether it's a Pharisee or a publican, or so there's one great nature of Jesus that you know he he had no uh, classification that this is a Pharisee, this is a righteous person, this is a legalistic person, nothing like that. He went wherever God wanted him to go, and so he went to this Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Verse 37, and behold there was a woman in the city who was a sinner so what it means about a sinner is that she was a immoral woman most probably uh, like a prostitute and when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the pharisee's house she brought an alabaster vial of perfume so this this woman who was a, a sinner a immoral woman she heard that jesus was there and then, I don't know when she bought this alabaster oil of perfume, probably sometime before or even at that time, she must have gone to some shop. And uh, I believe this alabaster oil, alabaster is a stone material, uh, very soft compared to a marble. Okay. So, uh, and it is expensive also. It's a uh, basic content is gypsum. Uh, and uh, so this, uh, alabaster vial of perfume uh, which uh, uh, they say some perfume of nard but i don't know which perfume this was but pro probably it was very costly and uh, she purchased it by the money that she earned okay you know we know what sort of way she earned the money but she bought this alabaster vial pretty costly uh, and she brought it to this house and verse 38 and standing behind him behind jesus at his feet weeping she began to wet his feet with her tears and kept wiping them with her with the hair of her head and kissing his feet and anointing them with perfume so here was this woman standing behind jesus and uh, weeping um, and as the tears were falling, it was falling on Jesus' feet and she was wiping his feet. It must have been uh, a good amount of tears for it, you know, to be, to wash that feet as well as to wipe it. And, uh, and then she started kissing his feet. And here was Jesus sitting and he definitely noticed that this woman was doing all this, but he didn't say anything. Okay. Verse 39, and now 
Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of person this woman is who is touching him, that she is a sinner or an immortal woman. So this Pharisee was thinking to himself, yeah, Jesus I know is a very is supposed to be a good teacher and a person who does a lot of things. He is a prophet, people talk all he's a prophet, but if he is really a prophet, such a woman coming and being an unholy woman, immoral woman coming and doing all this and he is just accepting it. Uh, he, he was thinking in his mind like this and many times we find in the Gospels, we find that when people think like that, uh, Jesus knows what they are thinking. It's called the, in the, the gift of the Spirit is called the word of knowledge. Okay, so by which, you know, uh, we, uh, God gives a understanding that what these people may be thinking. So this person, what he was thinking, Jesus started answering in verse 40. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. One thing is that Jesus knew the names of people. Okay, names are very important to Jesus. He's not saying that okay, this Pharisee somewhere. And that's why one thing, God knows our names, dear young people. God knows our names, you know, your name is precious to God. And Jesus said, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he replied, say it, teacher. 41, a certain moneylender had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. So there was a moneylender, he had, was lending money and one uh, took 500 denarii. Denarii is one, um, one day's wage, okay, so 500 days wage, pretty good amount of money, and the other is 50 denarii. And verse 42 when they were unable to repay, the, the problem is when we borrow things, it's very dangerous because that's why the Bible says, Do not be in debt. So, so they borrowed, but they were unable to repay, and this is what happens many times when we borrow money. It's like a burden on our head. Okay, none of us should be people who are having debt, you know, to repay back. Uh, try to finish, uh, be clear. You know, I, I don't want to keep even one or two rupees as a debt in my own mind. You know, that I have to give to somebody. So these people are unable to pay, repay, and there are some money lenders who will really treat them very harshly and you know punish them or you know take them to jail. But here was a money lender who was very gracious. 42. When they were unable to repay, he graciously forgave them both. What a, what a sort of a money lender this is. 550 denarii, he graciously forgave both of them. Uh, so, uh, here we see something of the graciousness of our Heavenly Father. Now this Money lender is like representing the uh, our God who is very gracious, the riches of his grace, the Bible says, the riches of his grace, the riches of his glory. Uh, so God's grace is so, which he lavishly put, uh, put upon us. That's what Ephesians says, you know, the riches of his grace. So uh, he graciously forgave them both, just like our God has graciously forgiven each one of us. He has graciously forgiven. Do you believe that? That God has graciously forgiven? Okay. So then Jesus said, Which of them therefore will love him more? So both have been forgiven. So which will love him more? So any of you want to say that? Feel free. I said that this is an interactive meeting. So far only I have been talking. Please feel Please uh, unmute and just keep talking. Let it be a both two way this thing. So, whom do you say among these two people who will love that money lender or be grateful to that money lender more? Yes. Nobody is saying anything. The one who forgiven much. Yeah. It's already written here. And you're right, right. 
so everybody is clear that the one who has been forgiven uh, who has been forgiven more uh, that is that man who was supposed to pay 500 dinari uh, he uh, was much more grateful because the burden on him the burden on him was too much okay the one who had 50 had lesser burden but the one who was forgiven uh, 500 dinari was real would really be grateful to this person you would, would always think of him say i said this man is such a great wonderful person so that, that is one principle we have to keep in mind uh, as he is speaking about this then simon answered and said verse 43 i suppose the one who forgave him more and jesus said you have judged correctly okay now now jesus turned to this woman who was doing all this weeping wiping his feet kissing his feet uh, from the alabaster while putting the perfume and the house was smelling with that perfume all this was going on as she was doing he turned to her and said and turning toward the woman he said to simon looking towards the woman he is saying to simon do you see this woman i entered your house you gave me no water for my feet so there was a custom there that they would wash the feet of the people who come in but simon did not do that okay though he invited but she has wet my feet with her tears she has wet not just some drops but that her, his feet was wet wet my feet with her tears that means you can see that how, how much amount of weeping she has done and uh, uh, how many of us have wept when you think about jesus this is one question i want to just put to you some of you may have i hope all of you have but uh, how, how many of you when you think about jesus or the word of god or anything or about your life about god's goodness or anything about jesus you know does tears come into your eyes i tell you this is a good sign I'm not talking about that emotion is the, anything great because even after tears of emotion and all that we can still commit sin but I'm only saying what I'm saying is that we are emotional about so many things about so many like in the cricket match we are excited and we or the football match or uh, or anything else about our relatives or our uh, loved ones we are excited and we we have tears of joy or we have tears of sorrow Okay, there is emotion but here i'm talking about when you think about jesus this is not uh, this it's actually a, a tears which is a good tears when we have when concerning god it is not a it's not tears of sorrow even when we uh, repent of our sins huh? those are tears which uh, is not like uh, when we are you know beaten and when we we are uh, uh, we are punished and we are you know, out of uh, or when we lose somebody, we just the natural emotion. It's not that way. When we have tears concerning God, it's even if of even of repentance or of joy, it's a very good thing. It liberates. If you have not experienced it, I hope after hearing this in your life you can experience it. It's a it's a liberating thing to to have tears when you think of God. Okay, so this woman had that. Uh, basically it was tears of repentance and tears of gratefulness to God because she already started receiving the message from Jesus eyes and his whole appearance okay so verse 44 but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair then he says the next thing that you gave me no kiss but since the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. She's not kissing any, you know, kissing the feet, which is, you know, you used to walk. Feet is feet are used to walk and it gets dirty. But that is the place she chose to kiss Jesus' feet. So uh, you did not do that. You did not hug me or welcome me like that. But this woman is doing this. The next one, verse 46, you did not anoint my head with oil. <clears throat> I don't know if that was like some custom which they had at that time. But she anointed my feet with perfume. She did not think of the head. 
but she thought of the of the feet and she anointed with perfume okay and then so basically uh, dear brothers and sisters what this woman did was uh, she was a, a prostitute she was a sinful woman she should have you know uh, been in that room as you know like uh, quieted down and in all condemnation she should have remained there but she was doing something which normal people would not do even simon the pharisee was not uh, free to express his uh, he liked jesus to come there but here was a woman who went out of you know the all limits first of all in weeping other thing in uh, the alabaster vial of uh, costly perfume and uh, so there was nothing there were all the barriers were broken that's what happens when we love jesus okay one other thing is that when we love jesus the all the barriers get broken okay so you don't think about what people think so not thinking about what is there was probably that uh, simon and some other men who there men there she she was not as sh- at all ashamed so this is one thing which happened so uh, then jesus says verse 47 is something which we all should remember every day of our life okay or all the time for this reason i say to you her sins which are many have been forgiven for she loved much but he who is forgiven little loves little so this is a verse which is which i always will remember in my life uh, yeah so it says for this reason i say to you her sins which are many her sins were so many okay simon uh, the pharisee was regarded as a good person probably in, in society he was the pharisees were regarded people used to uh, respect them so he was regarded as a good person and he himself must have thought you know i'm morally a good person and not like this woman but her sins were many his sins were little comparatively but she received the forgiveness of jesus okay and she felt such a love that it broke all barriers and she expressed her love in all these things what she did and uh, so jesus said uh, for she loved much why because she received so much of she was forgiven much by god and she so she loved much just like the uh, person, debtor who owed 500 denarii and he loved the money lender much so in the same way so now uh, then jesus says uh, says this but he who is forgiven little loves little he who is forgiven little loves little that's a very what do you say it's a word which uh, i mean uh, which which uh, says something about our lives um, if we are loving jesus or we don't have a passion for jesus or if the word jesus does not mean much to us he is somewhere in the list you know second third fourth okay it is probably because we have known little forgiveness i wish i can put this to you, all of you each one of you today that if you have not known jesus as the passion of your heart okay uh, uh, then it could be that because he's if he is not first on the list in our life but if he is second third fourth it is pro- probably because we have known little forgiveness from god god is gracious like that money lender much more gracious than the money lender he is abundantly forgiving any person you know whatever sin we have he will forgive but we have not been probably not been conscious that we have been forgiven much all of us actually have been forgiven much each one of us today how many of you are there 14 okay uh, so all of us have been forgiven much but some of us realize that we have been forgiven little probably because we feel that we are not such a bad sinner okay 
we have not done those bad things which other people have done and so on but you know the apostle paul who was blameless as per the law he said that he said that uh, i am the chiefest of sinners he didn't say try to make a big testimony try to you know uh, act humble but he felt that he was the chiefest of sinners more than all of you i am sinner so that is another that is another process uh, you know which can happen to our life when we go to this holy god our god is a holy god in him that he is light in him there's no darkness and he is he's so holy we are not at all worthy to stand before him but he has made us worthy he has given us the gift of righteousness okay freely given us the gift of the righteousness of christ he has placed upon us so that we can stand boldly and talk to him and and jesus loved us so much jesus loved us so much that he didn't want any sin to be in us and he is he died on the cross for us so that every sin of ours can be forgiven so when we think about our life and say lord show me how much i've been forgiven i have been forg- i feel i've been forgiven little but show me what all you have done and my i knew when i when i accepted jesus christ i knew that i was a very bad sinner that nobody had to tell me you brother you matthew you are a sinner no i knew i was a sinner so that but over over a period of time i felt much more that forgiven by god i'll tell you what, i'll tell you something uh, dear brothers and sisters that when we do something uh, some wrongs which we cannot even rectify okay we may repent of it we may don't not want to do it but there is no chance of rectifying it okay and god says i forgive you what will be the response have any of you done done something which you know you cannot rectify but god says he he forgives because jesus died for us jesus paid the penalty and jesus says i forgive you i have borne the wrath of god for those sins i am so thankful that there are so many things in my life where by any standard i am not at all worthy to even uh, have this house uh, earn the money that i am earning or have a family like this nothing but because i mean uh, literally saying if if uh, somebody had to punish me i would be nowhere but jesus forgave me and he accepted me and he gave me that gift of righteousness where i stand before him confidently boldly as a son and look forward to meeting him to meet him this is the wonderful gospel that we each one of us have and this woman the sinful woman of luke chapter 7 is a great example for us to uh, uh jesus words he who is forgiven little loves little so somebody sometimes some people ask him you know, i don't have the desire or to love jesus I, you know i'm not the same so this is the only uh, remedy that uh, just go to god and say lord i don't feel that be honest with him and say lord please show me how much you have forgiven Jesus, show me how much you have been, you know, how much I have been forgiven, and what you have done for me. And God will give a revelation, and that will make us love Jesus. And uh, then life will be totally different. Then he'll be like the pearl of great price. Then, like this woman went and bought this alabaster vial. What did the cost? Somewhere else, uh, another woman who did that. The cost was tremendous. I was trying to calculate that. In in the Bible, now we should. Uh, when you when you read about talents and when you read about dinarai you must go and try to calculate it's very interesting calculate how much is the cost uh, of the present day so it, that gives you an, the meaning of the story so this alabaster vial who uh, who the other woman another mary who broke that was very costly because the disciples themselves were saying why why is such a waste of money so this was something similar so the principle is this when jesus becomes when when god forgives us much then we love him much 
when we don't think, when we serve God, we don't think, oh, I'm giving so much, or I'm, my time I'm giving so much, my money I'm giving so much. All that does not become a question at all. It becomes a question because we love Him little. Then everything becomes like a some great thing that we are doing. But the one who loves Him more will say, I, I wish I can do much more for Jesus. I wish I can do much more. I don't know how, how much to say. I'll, we'll end now. But I want to say that this word of Jesus, He who uh, is forgiven little, loves little. The opposite of this is, He who is forgiven much, loves much. Just like this woman. So may God help each one of us to be people who love God much because He is a gracious God uh, who graciously forgives us much okay so let us be the people who love him also much so that my, uh, the title of the message is loving jesus more so loving jesus more is the thing that is required in our lives and that comes only when we know that we have been forgiven much then it, then naturally it's a natural uh, thing for us to love him back so this is what are there any questions may uh, ask uh, 